Come and join me by the fire. Welcome. It is best you do not know my name. But tell me. Ah, Kabash. I know this man. I will tell you everything I know. But first, a request. The one thing I long... Let us find out. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? Wonderful. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? And to what extent? In every situation? So, you're not entirely confident. That is quite sensible. Indeed, I'm reminded of something Socrates once said. To paraphrase, better to know that you know nothing than to know nothing and think that you know. It is because knowledgeable people have learned enough to know they know very little in the broader scheme of things. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? That is an excellent question, and it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct, which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? Let me guess. Is it yours? Ah, so you think of all the thousands of competing morality systems that exist. All of them were wrong, except yours, which is always perfectly correct. And you can follow that system in all situations, because there is only ever one possible interpretation. I honestly can't tell if you're seeking to frustrate me, or if you genuinely believe what you're saying. Good. Never discourage any... Would you say you know... And to what... So, that is... I'm... Rem better... It is... You see... So... But under... So to... So, let me ask... Are you sure? After hundreds of years, what hope do we have? My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. Surely you would agree there are circumstances where an exception may be made. For any rule, you can imagine there are countless situations in which that rule may be suspended. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them and evil people will always find a way around them. And so we must accept our limitations and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the golden rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. I'm glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. You mean, how did I end up living alone in this cave with nothing but these relics of the past for company? It's a long story. I was a quarrelsome young man. At 19, I left Corinth for Rome 
continued to study rhetoric at one of her finest academies, so I could argue more forcefully. Back then I used to enjoy verbally sparring with everyone I could, and I was good. One night I found myself in a tavern, in an argument with a drunk mercenary. It became heated, he drew a gladius, and I won the argument, but lost my life. I woke up on the banks of the Styx at a campfire opposite Karen. Of course, I tried to persuade her to let me return, but even with all my skill, I failed. I settled in, made friends, and learned what I could, quickly realizing our little community faced certain death under the Golden Rule. So I began looking for a place to hide underground. Fortunately, I found this place waiting for me. I returned to my friends above, persuaded them to join me, and twelve of us descended for the last time to live out our days hidden from Hades' tyranny. I'm afraid I am the only one left. There were twelve of us in the beginning, but one by one, my friends passed away. Some from malnutrition, others from madness and despair. It has been lonely. Before my unexpected visit from Kabash some weeks ago, I had not seen another person in many, many years. I fear that if you were to utter my name in the city, even by mistake, that Hades would hear you and know I am still alive. My generation was wiped out, turned to gold many years ago. My friends and I were able to avoid the same fate by hiding down here. I think it's safest to assume that if I was to return, Hades would realize that his furies hadn't finished the job, and he'd send them after me again. Living in darkness is not without its challenges. The first challenge is diet. Fortunately, I found that eating fresh fish provides most of the nutrients I need. And sometimes, when there are Greek people living up above, I surface at night and salvage the offerings they've left in the Temple of Demeter. The greater challenge is the isolation. Like so many things in life, arguments are better with a partner. They are one and the same. As you wish. Ha! Huh. Did we not discuss it at length already? Oh, I see. You're toying with me. Ha! You seek the plaque bearing the Egyptian inscription. It is a cursed object, and I would be happy to give it to you if Kabash had not already taken it. I will tell you, but you may find him hostile. To prepare for your encounter, there are certain things you must know. Very few know this, but before the Romans came to this city, it was once entirely Greek. The architecture, the temples, and the people. When the Romans came, in typical fashion, they claimed it as their own, built over everything that could be built over, and renamed the things that could not. Thus, the shrine of Persephone became the shrine of Proserpina. And when they found an obelisk bearing the name Hades, they tore it off and replaced it with Pluto instead. And the city's dwindling Greek residents, witnessing this compulsive Roman conquest, decided to preserve what they could of their heritage. They gathered their art and valuables, secreted them away through the Temple of Demeter, and hid them here, out of reach of the Romans. However, there was one thing that always seemed out of place to me, and it is the very thing you seek. An even older plaque bearing an Egyptian inscription. We had no idea until years later when the first of my friends began to die. As a result of their deaths, we began to dig catacombs branching off from this cavern to lay them to rest. We extended the tunnel. Suddenly it made sense why there was an out-of-place Egyptian plaque among our people's possessions. You see, we proud Greeks had thought the Romans beasts for stealing and corrupting our heritage. But it turns out this game has been going on much longer than any of us imagined. 
I think it is best you head through the catacombs and follow Kabash's trail. There are certain things you must see for yourself. Take this key. I enjoyed our chat. Stop! Do not come any closer. Who are you? I am Kabash. Hmm. And let me guess. Another Greek or Roman come to loot and plunder the resting place of my ancestors, hmm? Hmm. Trousers, boots, curious hair. No, I suppose you do not. Then what do you want? Hmm, to what end? Hmm, that is welcome news. You really are not Greek or Roman, are you? I was planning to return it myself, but for now, I must remain. Here, take it and restore the honor of Osiris. Now, as for the other plaque, Indeed, I have it right here. I stumbled across a collection of dusty curiosities while searching for a place to hide from the hungry children of Amit, and there it was. You may not. In fact, I am about to destroy it. Because it speaks a treacherous, blasphemous lie. I will tell you, but first, do you know what this place is? Indeed, and I see you know our history. This is the Duat. See what has become of it. I have been down here for weeks, piecing together its story. And here is what I have learned. As Egypt declined and the Greeks had their turn to flourish, 
Their souls came here in great numbers, but instead of adopting our ways, they copied and corrupted them. When they found the obelisk bearing the name Osiris, the true god of the underworld, they desecrated it, removing his name and replacing it with Hades. Even the ferryman of the dead, known to my people long before as Kerti, they renamed to Keron. As if that desecration was not enough, they built over this place, using it as the foundation for their own underworld, so that ours was forgotten. Hmm, <laughs> my only solace is that the Greeks then suffered the same fate when the Romans rose to power. It is inscribed with a script I do not recognize, but it is ancient, almost as if it is older than the plaque bearing Osiris's name. But if that is so, it would imply the gods of Egypt are mere imitations too, copied and corrupted from an ancient people who prospered even before us, and that my people did to them what the Greeks and Romans did to us. But this I cannot accept. I sense a deception. You will never know. This work of sacrilege must be destroyed, thrown into the black abyss below in Osiris's name. You are too late. It is done. You would plunge into the depths of the Duat with no way back up. Madness. If it will help you to see reason, then ask. I am from Rakotis, which you may know as Alexandria, the name of the city the Greeks built over it. Since the Romans had taken over from the Greeks, I took the opportunity to learn Latin. When the fires broke out last year, I tried to help. I gathered terrified locals into my boat and led many of them to safety farther along the Tiber. On my seventh trip, a passenger demanded I wait for his brother. I told him his brother would have to save himself, and he tried to bribe me by placing a coin into my hand. When I refused, he drew a dagger and thrust it between my ribs. I awoke on the banks of the river to a stranger wearing a ram headdress. He said his name was Kerti, and at the time I simply thought him odd. It did not dawn on me until much later that he was THE Kirti. This is where I belong. I think if someone is to break the Golden Rule, it will not be me, for I try to live as I always have by the command of the Goddess Ma'at. Do to the doer to make him do. As for the punishment that will come from it, I finally understand why it has long been said among my people that gold is the skin of the gods. I do not know. What could possibly lie beneath the underworld? All I know is... Most unwise. Good. Wait. You are planning to go down there. I see it in your eyes. You would plunge into the depth. Hmm, we...
When I told you that you would not find a way back up, that was not a prediction. That was a promise. You will die here. I disagree. You have undermined and dishonored the true god of the underworld. Very well, I will listen. Why should I let you live after you salvaged this instrument of blasphemy? Then you admit it. You wish to destroy the sacred beliefs of my people. Many of my ancestors endured great hardship to live good lives so that we may descend to the Duat in death and be judged accordingly. We prepare to have our hearts weighed on Anubis's scales, and yet I arrive here to find the Book of the Dead contained only a seed of truth. And now I ask myself, did our priests steal and embellish the stories of an older people and feed us lies all our lives simply to trick us into obedience? I am not sure I follow. Speak plainly. Hmm. Perhaps there is some truth in that. What is your point? Hmm. You are persuasive. Very well. I will let you live, and you may do what you will with that plaque. I will remain here for a while, and attempt to learn what I can about the foundations of my people's beliefs. Go. see you again, friend. I enjoyed our... big enough may fortune hmm? 
blow. May Apollo keep you safe. What now? When Maliolus wins... Maliolus, of course. Whatever. All right, now you've crossed a line. Get out of there! I trust. Isn't the great temple Ave again? It, it'll be why? As I said, I'm planning to hold it before dusk. Well, citizens, it is time. Let us meet to elect our magistrate. Citizens, 
We have a quarate body of voters gathered here to elect the city's magistrate. The candidates are Sextus Sentius Imperiosus and Marcus Maliolus Gerges. As agreed, we shall dispense with ballots and candidates will abstain from voting. Let's make this quick. As I say your name, call your vote. I'll start with you, Horatius. Sentius, of course. Georgius. Sentius. Dacius. Maliolus. Galerius. I abstain. I'm just here to observe. Virgil. Meliolus. Ulpius. Sentius. Rufius. Sentius. And finally, Domitius. Maliolus. Who else? Citizens, you have made your decision. Sextus Sentius Imperiosus. My fellow citizens, you've placed your trust in me once again, and you won't regret it. I vow that each day henceforth will be just like this one, and I will deliver. You, the new arrival, whatever your name is, you're responsible for this, aren't you? Nobody likes Capet Murde foreigners interfering in an election. Shut up and let the magistrate speak. Maliolus is going to be magistrate by the end of the day. You have no idea what you're doing. You're going to get us all killed. Just stay out of our way, and we won't have a problem. Wait, I will not allow you to do this. You're showing your true colors now, priestess. Your corruption sickens me. Demetrius, ignore her. Proceed. This is insanity. You'll doom us all. Lies! It is time the Golden Rule was exposed for what it is, a children's fable exploited by a treacherous leader to instill fear in all of us. The Golden Rule is real, you idiot. Shut up, all of you. The Magistrate has spoken. I'm going to enjoy killing you, old man. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one.